I did not know that graphics cards can leak oil, but my current adventures of mining with the 3090 that I have has actually enlightened me on the subject. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and in today's video, I wanna talk about my 3090 leaking oil and what I did to fix it. Now, I know that most of this video, you're probably gonna be looking at this like, oh, boo-hoo, you have a 3090, get over it. I seriously paid MSRP for this. I did not pay a scalper, and I have to give a huge shout out to J-Derp, AKA Joshy Poo, AKA Sir Derps a lot, because he was the one who sold it for MSRP, and then he paid for shipping, so I actually got like lesser than MSRP. He sold me this card because in his mining experience, it overheated, not the card itself, but the memory chips. So I knew going in that the memory might be a problem on this card, uh, but I still wanted to try to milk as much, you know, cryptocurrency as I can out of it to help pay for the card before I make it my main gaming card. And gaming, workstation, like it's just, it's gonna go on my main rig eventually, but not until it pays itself off, which with this, my 1080 Ti, my 2080 Ti, and my RTX 4000, surprisingly, is really, really good for what it is. With all those together in the last couple few months, I've already made about $25, $2,600. So in reality, me buying this card and then getting into cryptocurrency in general has already paid for itself. This is not including the power used, which is roughly about $100 to $150 more per month to run them 24 seven, but still, it's, it's still making money. Now this is the Aurorus Extreme, which, you know, there was like this whole thing with, you know, what version of the 3090s you get, I think, which the memory things on the back, when I took it apart, it had the four things. So I think it's the better one, but 24 gigs of RAM. So three fans, 24 gigs of RAM. This thing is pretty nice. I usually don't buy gigabyte stuff, but you know, when it's the market that we're in right now, you just kind of have to go out on a limb. So, you know, I'm not let down. And then just in case you're wondering, all this stuff is part of a current project that I have where I am rebuilding my worker space. So I have, you know, lasers, engravers, couple 3D printers, another one on the way. So this is a transitional phase because I'm building a table. Moving on. So apparently Gigabyte, and this might be, you know, for other vendors as well, but Gigabyte specifically in my case, used thermal pads that when heated up for an extended period of time, leaked oil, like a lot of oil. I mean, it got everywhere. It was making messes. And at first I thought it was condensation or water, but then when I touched it, it was slimy and it never evaporated. So it was actually like thermal paste slash pad leakage. It was just extruding oil. And this all started happening within a week of me starting to mine with cards. So the temperatures on the memory at first, cause I had some crazy fans on it, was staying within reasonable temperatures and the card itself was not thermal throttling because I had big fans on it. But then when it started leaking grease everywhere or oil everywhere, it drastically started heating up the memory chips. I put more and more fans on it, but eventually in order to just kind of get by until I could buy new pads, which now I have a full collection of different pads and different sizes, I basically underclocked the memory and then slightly overclocked the core CPU just to try to make up for the loss in uh, processing power. I did that for a while, watched some YouTube videos, and then I found that I can get, you know, these three, uh, three millimeter, 1.5, two millimeter. Basically, I got them all just to make sure I had them all. Uh, and I was playing with different sizes to see which one fit. But in the meantime, I underclocked the memory just to keep it from thermal throttling because the memory was getting up to 110 degrees Celsius, which is the card's I think it's called TJ Maxx, maybe for memory. Is it the same thing for memory? But when it hits 110, it starts throttling the GPU itself and thus, you know, like just losing ability to process profitably. So I got the joy of breaking down my brand new 3090 graphics card, which cost about $1,600. I've never done this before in my life, taking everything apart and replacing thermal pads. I did experiment and initially I wanted to create a sort of a tutorial showing step-by-step -step process, but then I realized that originally I put on the wrong size pads and then I had to kind of go back and forth between pads to find the right size that worked because even though on the back it looked like three millimeters, when I put it back with an actual three millimeter, it did not fit. So I ended up putting one, no, two millimeter on it instead. So between bouncing back and forth from that, and because I originally ordered three and 1.5 and then ran out and then ordered more because I ran out, and then the card had to sit there, et cetera. All of this just kind of came to the fact that I wasn't gonna be able to make a tutorial. However, I could lay out everything that I did in order to show you the end results. And why I'm actually probably a little frustrated with, I don't know, 
I'm gonna say gigabyte, but I'm a little frustrated that you have a super powerful, expensive graphics card that leaks oil if you actually use it to its capacity, which is kind of crazy to me. I don't know why it would do that. But while I was in there swapping out the thermal pads, which greatly reduced the memory and, and increased the connection to the back plates, I also took off the thermal paste that they included and I used thermal grizzly thermal paste instead, which I think I noticed a little bit of a difference, but that wasn't really a problem initially. So I think they actually did okay with the thermal grease. It was just the thermal pads that had problems. Either way, I was already in the GPU, so I didn't want to not do that. So enjoy this moment of judging the way that I put thermal grease on a GPU. Yeah, yeah, do you feel triggered right now? Do you just wanna smack that monitor like a bad girl? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, smack that monitor. You tell it who's boss. And the end result is, well, it's the same exact card. But you might be noticing something a little funky going on right here. The thing about the 3090 and the memory is that yes, you do need a good thermal connection to the backplate in order to keep it cool. However, the memory chips produce so much heat that you still need more heat dissipation. On this side, the memory is connected to all these heat fans. They have an actual fan dispersing heat. They got heat pipes leading up to it, etc. But on the back, it is literally just a metal plate with no active cooling, but there's an equal amount of memory attached to the back that there is on the front, which means it gets hot as hell and it thermal throttles and it needs to be solved. So this was a temporary solution because I had it on hand. I have since ordered other heat sinks that I'm going to permanently place on the back of this. And this is all gonna be featured in a mining build, which features a Be Quiet case, a big old Be Quiet Beastly uh, power supply, and all the GPUs that I could possibly fit in this case with a bunch of fans. And I'm custom cutting this case holes for fans. And I'm gonna I'm a blow the crap out of this, like fit, literally, like just lots of blowing. But this heat sink itself actually only dropped it two degrees from the improvement that I had. See, originally I had to underclock the memory, but before I did that, I was hitting 110 degrees Celsius. Then when I underclocked the memory, I was keeping it to about 100 degrees Celsius. Then when I replaced the thermal pads, I was able to get about an average of 92 degrees Celsius. Bear in mind, this is of course with a large fan blowing a ton of air over the graphics card because this backplate gets hot as hell. So it was about 90, 92 degrees. I put on this fin and it keeps it around 90, just a little bit more steadily. Before it was kind of bouncing back and forth. So this real, it really didn't help that much. And it was really kind of a cheap pad slash sticker thing. So it's not, it's not a good one. This is something that I just had laying around. In fact, I ordered this because I was thinking about fashioning up some sort of like an all over heat sink, which I haven't even done yet. I haven't explored yet. I saw a Reddit post on it and it looked interesting. So this might be a thing. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's so directional, you know, it's not taking air from the side. So if I did this, I would probably have to cut it up like this and then put it on the back. That way the air can flow because my build that I'm about to do is gonna have air coming in from this side. So I want the air to be able to flow that way. But I don't know if I'm gonna do that yet. I just bought this just in case. But now not only can I run the memory at stock speeds, but I can also very slightly overclock the GPU. We're talking about 175 megahertz, overclocked the GPU, and now I went from 103 mega Haskells per second, which was my, my general kind of max that I was able to mine out of this card, to 106. It's not a huge improvement, but the difference is I'm running at 90 degrees Celsius all the time on my memory chips, which means they're going to not fry, they're going to last longer, everything's running cooler, and as far as I could tell, I'm running basically at maximum capacity on the 3090 as far as compute power. Yes, I had to spend about 50, 60 bucks in pads. Yes, I could do other ones if I have problems, but realistically, my 2080 Ti, my 1080 Ti, and my RTX 4000 don't have like these kind of problems. It was really just the 3090 that was running into thermal throttling issues. But I will definitely check up on that when I do my build and do some tests. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe to get that build. It's on the horizon. I got a few things to do to finish this up first. But now that I have 
new thermal pads that do not leak oil, which by the way, took a, a lot of time to clean off the board and use, you know, basically lots of alcohol and Q-tips, just cleaning the board very slowly to get all the oil off. Thankfully, it wasn't conductive oil, so it didn't fry anything or mess anything up. And as far as I can tell, there's no holes in the heat pipes. So I shouldn't have any long lasting issues. And based off of the, perform the performance that I got after I swapped out the pads, I think for now, everything is fixed. And it's been running for about a week and a half like this. So, so far so good. Guys, if you have any questions or if you'd like to get these pads, I will link them in the description down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for this milking of the miners, If you have any recommendations for crypto mining, leave them in the comments down below. So as always, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and have yourself a great day.